For this video, what I want to do is show you how to go through a two sample Z test for the difference between means. In this particular video, I am going to show you how to use the TI-84 to complete the calculations. So what we have here is a guidance counselor claims that the students in a college prep program have a higher mean ACT score than the students in the general program. 45 students who are randomly selected from the college prep program have a mean ACT score of 24.1 with a population standard deviation of 4.6. The mean ACT score of 42 randomly selected students from the general program is 20.2 with a population standard deviation of 5.2. At 5% level of significance, can you support the guidance counselor's claim? All right, so the reason that we have a two sample Z test is because we're comparing two different groups. We're comparing those in the college prep program and those in the general program, and we're specifically looking at their ACT scores. Okay, um, so in order to do a hypothesis test, the first thing that you want to do is go through your conditions, and conditions may vary depending upon what textbook you are using. Uh, so be very careful about looking at what your specific textbook says. The textbook that I'm working out of has the following conditions. Um, the first one is that um, the difference between a two sample Z test and the two sample T test is what type of standard deviation you have. If you have a sample standard deviation, then you are going to use a two sample T test. If you have the population standard deviation, which we do, then we are going to use the two sample Z test. So that's the only difference between the two sample Z and the two sample T tests is what, what type of standard deviation you have. So that's the first thing that I'm going to write down. We know sigma 1 and sigma 2, which are the population standard deviations for both group. Okay. Um, the other things that we have to have is we have to know that the groups are independent, and it should be an independent sample because um, if you are in the college prep program, then you won't be in the uh, general population. So the two groups are independent. You have to have random samples, and it does say that they were randomly selected. So um, Okay, and then the last thing, in order for the central limit theorem to kick in, for us to be able to use the normal distribution, uh, we do have to have sample sizes that are either both greater than or equal to 30, or we have to have started with a normally distributed population. Okay, so we do have sample sizes, both samples. are greater than or equal to 30. So since all of our conditions are met, we will use the two sample the two sample Z tests. So you always want to identify which test you're using. Um, in some places, like I know on the AP stats test, they will either take you writing it out or by the formula, so you can identify it either way. Okay, now that we have established which tests that we are going to use, our next step is to set up the null in the alternative hypotheses. Okay, um, depending upon which um, course you are in, you may have to write this out in word form or you may be able to just write it symbolically. Okay, so I'm going to let mu1 represent the college prep students. Okay, and we're going to use mu2 to represent students in the general program. 
So it's very important to understand which one is which. So you can either write it out like this, um, so you can identify the symbols, or you can write out that um, there is no difference between the two for your null hypothesis, and then in the alternative, you would state it that the students in the college prep will have a greater mean than the students in the general program. Okay, I'm just going to write it symbolically. So depending upon your textbook, the one that's really important is the alternative. Since it states up above that the guidance counselor says that you would have a higher mean ACT, that means that we would have mu1 is greater than mu2. Higher means greater. Okay, so the mean of the students in the college prep is going to be greater than the mean in of the other. And I should say that mu1 is the mean of students in the college prep. And the mu2 is the mean of students in the general program. Okay. Um, the null hypothesis always has to contain equality. So we would say that mu1 is less than or equal to mu2, or you could just say that mu1 equals mu2, that there is no difference. Okay, so we are testing that the mean of the college prep group is greater than the mean of the general program. And this is our claim. Okay, it's important to remember which one is the claim, that way you can identify everything. So let's write down all of our important information. So the things that we need to know in order to um, use our formula is we have to know our the size of our sample for our first group, we have to know the sample mean of our first group, and we have to know the population standard deviation of our first group. We have to do the same thing for the second group. Okay, and we need to know our level of significance. So let's go back up and identify all of the information. All right, so from the college prep group, we have 45 students, so that's our N1. 24.1 is our mean, and 4.6 is our standard deviation. So let's go ahead and write that down. So the size of our first sample is 45. The sample mean is 24.1 and the population standard deviation is 4.6. Okay, for our second group, we had 42 with a mean of 20.2, and our population standard deviation is 5.2. So let me just go point that out to you. So it said that we had 42, 20.2, and 5.2. And our alpha level is our level of significance. So 5%, we would say that alpha equals 0 0.05. Remember that our significance level helps us to determine whether we are going to reject the null or whether we are going to fail to reject the null. Okay, so let's draw a picture of this because it's always important to draw the model. Because of the fact that it's greater than, we know that this is going to be a right tail test. Okay, so that means that when I draw out my picture, I'm going to shade the right tail. I'm going to go ahead and wait until I run it in my calculator to see what my p-value is so I can see how much I should shade. Okay, um, remember that the formula for this, in case you do have to show it out, is z equals x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2. Okay, over the population standard deviation squared over N1 plus sigma 2 squared over N2. Now, if you're using your TI-84, you don't have to plug all these values into your calculator because your calculator will automatically do it when you run the test. But just in case you have to show the work, it's always important that you know the formula. Okay, for this, we would just plug in our X bar 1 is 24.1 x bar 2 is 20.2. We're saying that there is no difference. This part right here could be written as mu1 minus mu2 is less than or equal to 0, which means that there is no difference. So technically, we're putting in a difference of 0 here. There are tests that they may say that the difference is greater than or equal to 1 or less than or equal to 1 or something like that. So that's the only time that this won't be 0. So this part right here is just going to be the zero. 
Okay, so I'm not going to write that in there. And then in the denominator, we would have 4.6 squared over 45 plus 5.2 squared over 42. Okay, so now we have it all set up. Let's grab our calculator so that we can see what Z is approximately. And we're also going to get our P value which is our probability that our differences are going to be less than a certain value, okay? Or that the probability that this is going to be greater than this, okay? Um, but the p-value is just your probability or how likely it is to get the results that we did if there really weren't a difference between the two, okay? So in our calculator, what we're going to do is we're going to hit stat and we're going to go over to tests. And this is where you have to know your conditions because there's a lot of tests listed out here. So you have to know which one you're selecting. We established that we're using the two sample Z tests. So again, that was stat and go over to tests. And then we're going to choose option three. Okay, it's going to ask you, do you have the data or do you have the stats? You're going to use data if you have information to plug into L1 and L2, which we don't. So we're going to use stats. Okay, so our sigma 1 was 4.6. Okay, our sigma 2 was 5.2. X bar 1 was 24.1. In 1 is 45 x bar 2 is 20.2 and in 2 was 42. So let me make sure that I have all those down. Um, I just took all of these numbers here and plugged them in. I had them on paper so that's where I got them from. So our sigma 1 was 4.6, 5.2, 24.1, 45, 20.2, and 42. It's always important to make sure that you select it um, that you plug in everything correctly. Okay, and then here this always goes off of your alternative hypothesis. So remember all, our alternative hypothesis is greater than the right tail. So we want it to match in here. So we're saying that mu1, we want it to be greater than mu2. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw this because it will give me both my z and my p value. And so when I draw this, you can see that almost nothing is shaded. And down here, it tells us that our p-value is 1 e negative 4. Remember that the e is the calculator's way of doing scientific notation, which means that this is 1 times 10 to the negative 4th, which means it's not very likely to occur. Okay, So our z is 3.695, and our p-value is 1 e negative 4 and you can't leave it like this but that's what our calculator gave us remember that this means 1 times 10 to the negative fourth which means that we really have 0 0.0001 okay so this is our p-value so that's the probability of this happening just by chance alone if there really was no difference between the two groups which is extremely unlikely and so if we shade this here our p-value is 0 0.0001 and our z is 3.695 okay so this is very unlikely to happen now our decision rule that we are going to use is we are going to compare our p value to our alpha okay so our p value is 0 0.0001 which this is definitely less than our alpha of 0 0.05. And so that means that we will reject the null hypothesis. Remember that you're always going to either reject the null or fail to reject the null. You never make a conclusion about the alternative. Okay, so we are going to reject the null hypo hypothesis, which is essentially telling us and this is extremely strong evidence in support of the alternative, okay? So we're rejecting this here, which means that the evidence points towards the alternative being true. And this is a pretty strong result because our p-value is so low and we got a z-score that's greater than three. And that almost doesn't ever happen by chance alone. So as far as interpreting goes, it's important to put your level of significance. So we would say at 5%, 
we have enough evidence to, and now we would put in our context, to support the claim that the mean ACT score of students in the college prep program is higher than the mean ACT score of the students in the general program. Okay, and I know that if you're in AP stats, they really want you to reference the p-value in your interpretation. There's a lot of different ways of interpreting depending upon what text you pick up. The biggest things that you need to have is you need to at least have the level of significance as well as the context of the problem. It's really important to be able to explain this to someone else. I personally don't like to put the p-values in my interpretation because I want this to come across to people that don't understand statistics and if I start talking about p-values they have no idea um, what I'm talking about. So I just reference it as at 5%. All right, so just to recap, I know that this is a very long video, this is a long process even with the calculator. You always start with conditions, you figure out whether you're dealing with the mean or proportions, that's like the biggest difference between whether you use a two sample z-test or a two proportion z-test, is whether you're dealing with the mean or proportions, so those are some things that you want to look for. Um, if you have two samples, then you're either going to use two sample z, two sample t, for the mean and the difference between whether you use Z or T is what type of standard deviation you have. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.